This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. What is going on and welcome to Take On The World Lockup. I'm Mike D. Um, we're in the new year and uh, with the new year I wanted to do something special for my uh, first lockup episode of the year. Uh, so I went on a quest to find the first prison in the United States. And uh, while doing that research I found that those waters are so muddy it was going to take a little bit more research to figure out which exactly was the first. However... While I was looking, I found a jail that is the oldest still operational jail in the United States. Dating back to 224 years ago, 225 now, uh, in 1789, the New Jersey State Prison is the only prison still around in the 18th century. The New Jersey Penitentiary House was opened in 1798 and is the oldest building still in operation as part of an active working jail in the U.S. Located in Mercer County, Trenton, New Jersey, this prison has been the residence of some of New Jersey's most dangerous and evil people, including numerous serial killers, murderers, and cop killers. In 1832, a new cell block was built, known as the Fortress Penitentiary, and the prisoners were moved from Penitentiary House to the new Fortress Penitentiary 1836. It was constructed on a connected piece of land that the state had already owned and was controlled by the penitentiary house. The keeper of the prison, or warden, supervised inmate labor to construct the fortress penitentiary. The 1832 facility was expanded several times throughout the 19th century, with new construction adding wings to the jail between 1859 and 1907. A larger shop hall was constructed as well. In 1895 and 96, when Six Wing was constructed, the original walls were extended around the compound to the corners of the old penitentiary house to enclose the wing as well as the newer shop buildings. After moving inmates to the new fortress house, penitentiary houses used the Mercer County Jail, while the workhouse in Titusville, New Jersey, was being constructed, after which it was used as a National Guard armory until 1929. The cleared land on which penitentiary house cell houses and shop buildings had previously stood were enclosed with a 22-foot-high reinforced concrete wall and opened as the Big Yard in 1930. This new, large recreation yard eased the cramped conditions inside the walls of the main compound, which up until that time had limited space to devote to outside recreation. In 1930, most of penitentiary house was demolished, except for the front house, which functioned as the original living quarters for the keeper of the state prison, the warden. The four assistant keepers, the first four men who served in the capacity of what is now known as a correction officer, the armor, administrative spaces on the first floor, and a row of cells for confinement for disruptive inmates in the basement. Since the original penitentiary house stopped housing prisoners, Within a few years after the 1832 Fortress Penitentiary opened, Auburn Correctional Facility in New York, late, that fact has been disputed over and over, and there's no real clear answer right now, and I'll find it, to who was actually the oldest continuously operating cell house in the U.S., and what is the oldest actual prison in the United States. Fortress House Penitentiary was designed by John Havlin. And if you haven't watched it yet, go back and look for uh, John and I's visit to Eastern State Penitentiary. John Havlin's the same man who designed and built that prison. The reformist mindset, known as the Philadelphia system, that made the Eastern State Penitentiary the iconic prison that it is, is the same mindset for Fortress Penitentiary and can be seen on a marker outside the prison. Hic labor hoc opus. Labor, silence, penitent. The direct translation is, this work, this work, but the common translation is, this is the hard work. Fortress Penitentiary 
focused on hard labor and penitence. In 1907, capital punishment was moved from the county jails to the state prisons after the implementation of the electric chair as the sole form of execution in New Jersey. The New Jersey State Prison was a site of death row and the state's electric chair. The last execution in New Jersey took place in 1963. A lethal injection room was built but never used as the death penalty was abolished in New Jersey in 2007. A modern compound was added to the two older parts of New Jersey State Prison in 1979. No new additions have been made since that was completed in 1982. It was in the 1979 re renovation that saw the death house, Wing 8, demolished to make room for a new gymnasium. New Jersey State Prison is the number one worst prison in the state on the list of seven worst prisons in New Jersey. Inmates of note over the years included a number of serial killers, murderers, and rapists. Bruno Hopman, the kidnapper and murderer of Charles Lindbergh's son, Richard Kuklinski, Gambino Mafia hitman known as the Iceman. John List, the boogeyman of Westfield, killed his entire family. Reuben Carter, boxer who was wrongfully convicted of murder, released in 1985, and the real-life story behind it, the Denzel Washington movie, The Hurricane. I know I'm going to butcher this next name. Jesse Timendakis, sentenced to death for the rape and murder of Megan Hanka, which is what led to the passage of Meg Megan's Law. Charles Cullen, New Jersey's most prolific serial killer, confessed to killing 40 people while working as a nurse. His real body count is thought to be well over 100. These are the kind of inmates that have been housed at New Jersey State Penitentiary. I find it amazing that the New Jersey State Prison, or the Trenton State Prison, was first built in the 18th century, in 1798, and is still in operation today. While the cells themselves are not from the original building, it is still one of America's oldest prisons. If you like this video, you want to see more of them, drop a comment down below. Hit the bell, do all the algorithm stuff. It helps us out. Uh, also, if you want to hear more great podcast content, you need to check out the Deluxe Edition Network. The Deluxe Edition Network is a group of great podcasts covering a vast variety of topics. All easy to find in one place. DeluxeEditionNetwork.com Check it out. This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to DeluxeEditionNetwork.com That's DeluxeEditionNetwork.com <laughs>